Hello and welcome once again, friends. My name is Gerald, Pastor Innovate Christian Community Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Welcome to our daily psalm reading. This is your first time. Welcome. This is something we've been doing for quite some time. Coming on here to read our psalm each night in the hopes that it is a blessing and encouragement to you and even to myself as we get to go into God's Word and see what it is He has to say to us through the psalms. Tonight is Psalm 90, and it's written from Moses, or by Moses. So this one's going back sometime. It is Psalm 90, and is entitled, From Everlasting to Everlasting. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you, had you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust, and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with the flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath, we bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us and number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. So this one here, you know, Moses was responsible for leading the Israelites out of Egypt. And, of course, the troubles that come along with leading people, and especially the probably hundreds of thousands of people that he had to lead, uh, may have been weighing heavy on this, or he may have been reflecting back to Egypt's time, or to Israel's time under uh, Egyptian rule. You know, and, and he talks about how, again, you know, it has sort of like David here with, you know, for we were brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath, we were dismayed. You know, apparently this is probably one of those times where God was, I don't want to say being harsh, but punishing the Israelites as they were traveling along because as they went, they continued to whine and cry even to the point of praying and you know and, and complaining to God that or complaining to Moses about God why didn't you just leave us in Egypt at least there we had the food we had shelter yada yada you know just complaining and whining that it was better to be in slavery to the Egyptians than to be in the wilderness as God was leading them to the promised land you know sometimes we get the same way you know, I'm just as guilty. Sometimes this life can be toilsome. It can be hard. It can be tiring. It can be pointless to some degree, it seems. You know, and you wonder just how much longer, you know, many of us wait in expectation for the Lord to return as we know that he will. And so many of us can sometimes just kind of overlook this life and just longing for the next. But I love how Moses comes back to, you know, establish the work of our hands. Show us happiness. Make us be glad all the days. You know, give us those good times, Lord. And we know that most of us have good days. Most of our days are probably good. They're not all toilsome. They're not all hard. But yet... We can find ourselves guilty to whining and crying about life. And it's understandable. When you're going through dark times, never be afraid. 
to bring those times to God. He can hear. He can listen. It doesn't punish us because times are hard or because we think they're a little bit tough on us. He can accept our disappointment at times. But we should always have hope. We should always remember the good times, but also have hope that good times will return no matter how bad things are. So friends, as always, I just pray this has been a blessing to you. Pray that it's an encouragement. And if so, would you take the time to share it with someone else so that they too can be blessed and encouraged? And we'll be on here again tomorrow evening, and we'll be glad to have you with us. And until then, have a wonderful night.